Here's what we're going to make today. This is a design by my friend Monique, and she calls it the Nostalgia Coaster. Now, I made mine in worsted weight yarn, that's U.S. number 4 designation, using a 5 millimeter crochet hook. She made her original using a 3 millimeter hook and yarn, she's in Europe of course, and they designate their yarn differently. So it's just designated to be used with 3 millimeter hooks. I am estimating it's between number 1 and number 2 in the U.S. She used cotton, which is ideal for its absorbency, and if you were using something like this as a potholder, cotton is also ideal because it's much safer in hot areas than it is than is my yarn, which is acrylic. However, I'm going to use the number four, and you see what it, we're getting, about seven and a half inches from outside scallop to outside scallop, or if we were measuring in millimeters, let's see. Here's the end that's centimeters. It's looking like 19. So this is more of a potholder, trivet, doily size. I'm going to go ahead and demo in this size because it's going to be easier for you to see the stitches. I just want you to be aware that if you'll go down a hook size and say to a four or three and a half, probably a four millimeter hook and number three yarn, otherwise known as DK, or a smaller hook still, and number one or two yarn, you will go from this size to this size to this size. I'm doing the English video. Um, she has another friend doing one in Dutch. Monique is multilingual, and she wrote the pattern for us both ways. You would also like to be aware probably that in Europe and in the UK, triple crochet means something different than it does in the US. And she is crochet-wise bilingual as well. So she wrote the version for Americans using English and our usual stitch designations. I am not going to teach you how to crochet here per se, but I will review what the stitches look like and do the first of each of its kind slowly and explain as we go. So if you have the basics in hand, you should be able to work with me. We're going to start with our knotted loop already on the crochet hook and chain three. One, two, and let's quickly review the chain stitch. You reach down, yarn over, that means grab the yarn with your hook, oops, and pull through. Now I'm going to go slip stitch into the very first stitch. Slip stitch means stick in the hook, yarn over, which I'd already done, and pull through a loop. Now we have a tiny little circle. Here's our circle. Here's the stitch coming out of it where we slip stitched. I'm going to tighten that up. It tried to loosen up on me a little bit. Chain three, one, two, three. Now half double crochet, which is yarn over, insert into the circle, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all the loops. That is, pull the stitch on the hook through all the other loops. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. We're going to do this a total of seven times, but it will behave as though there are eight double, half double crochets because the initial chain stitches function in the same way as one half double crochet. Let's see where we are. It's not very difficult to count. There's the first two, three, four, five, six, seven. One more. Yarn over. Eight. 
Eight half double crochets are completed if we count this initial chain as a half double crochet. Now we want to slip stitch into the second of the chains that were made. This is the slip stitch, one, two chains. In we go, pull up a loop, and close round two. Begin round three with chain two, one, two. Now we're going to half double crochet twice into each stitch. This first chain counts as one, then we'll go into the same stitch with a half double crochet. Next one around. Two half double crochets. While I do this round, I want to tell you something. Uh, I would never in a million years do a video of somebody else's pattern without permission. I do have permission, and so I'm able to share this with you. The pattern, by the way, is free to download on Ravelry, but we wanted videos to back it up because some people learn best one way, some people the other, and it's nice to have access to both kinds of documentation. And just because it helps people keep track, um, Monique says it helps dyslexic people, which is true, but I'm not dyslexic and I still find it helpful. In the pattern, she has alternated colors for step one is one color, step two is another, and they go back and forth which helps you keep track of where you are. Also, at the end of each step, there's a number in parentheses, and that is telling you how many stitches should be completed in that particular round. The number for this round is 16. So let's count. I see my chain stitches. But now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And I'm on the 16th stitch now. It will appear when I lock this in place, which it's time to do. We'll slip stitch this round closed. and chain two. We're going to half double crochet again in the same stitch. Now we're going to go around alternating one half double crochet, two half double crochets per stitch. So there's one. Next stitch gets two. Next stitch gets one. I will go on around in this manner and you do the same. When we're done, we should have 24 stitches in this round. If you get lost, phone rings or something, first of all, you shouldn't let it, you should turn it off. But if I'm talking, for example, not sure where I am, but it's easy to tell. See those two V's in the same hole? That's two half double crochets. Then there's one, so I'm ready for two again. See you when I'm around. If you are an experienced crocheter, you probably know there is more than one way to join the round. You could go into the stitch you're supposed to join, or once there are some actual stitches, not just chains, you could go under. It is your call, and it varies with the circumstance what's best. At this point, I've decided to begin going under. So I did. That's my slip stitch closed. Now I'm ready to chain two. Half double crochet into the same stitch. 
And now we're going to start a slightly different pattern. We're going to do two half double crochets per stitch, then one, then one, then two, all the way around. So that counted as my first two. One. One. Next stitch we'll get two. Why, you may wonder, if you're fairly new to this, are we doing two into some stitches? It's so as to make the circle grow. It would not lay down flat if we didn't increase the number of stitches as we increase the circumference. And the job of the designer, in this case Monique, is to figure out at what pace it will correctly enlarge and create a flat circle. And she's done it beautifully. What's particularly impressive is that it does work fine when you change gauges. Single stitch, single stitch, double. We'll repeat that. Single stitch, single stitch in the stitch below. There's still half double crochets. I don't mean single crochet stitch. I mean how many are going into each stitch from the round below. So we'll continue around like that and join at the end. See you when I get ready. This round begins with chain three. One, two, three, double crochet into the same stitch. Whoops, drop that one. Let's try again. Double crochet and chain one. Now we skip the next stitch from the round below and I'll go into double crochet a little bit explaining it. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over. Up to here, this is exactly the same as the half double, but the half double I would finish by pulling this loop through all three that are also on the hook. However, I'm going to yarn over and pull through two and do the same thing again. That's the difference between double and half double. Skip a stitch from the row below. Whoops, did I put my chain stitch in? I did not. After every pair of half doubles, there's a chain. So now we'll do two, not half doubles, doubles. I misspoke, sorry about that. Two double crochet chains, one chain stitch. Skip the stitch on the row below, and two double crochets into the next, followed by a chain stitch. All the way around, we should end up with 16 pairs of double crochet stitches. So I'll go on around, you go on around, and we'll meet up when we're ready to join this round. This is the recommended place to change colors if you want to, and I've decided that I will. So I'm joining the, ra joining the round. I've already snipped the yarn. I'm going to pull it through. And I don't know how you weave in yarn tails, but I'll show you one simple way, and you use the one that works the best for you. I'm going to go ahead, put the yarn into a yarn needle, take it to the back of the work, work it through a few stitches. And that should be good enough, but if I'm really uneasy about it, I can go back through some in the other direction. I'm working under one layer of the stitch, so in the finished work this won't show up very much. Normally you would use a yarn needle with a smaller eye, but I thought you could see what I was doing well with this big thick plastic one. Alright, time for the next round. Now we're changing colors and we're working in the gap between the pairs of double crochets. I'm bringing up the loop that I slip knotted into the yarn, chain three. 
The gap is also known as the chain space. We're also going to work three double crochets into this space. There's one, two, three. This round is very straightforward. In every one of the chain spaces that falls between every pair of double crochets, we work four double crochets. That's really what we did in the first one, but that first chain three takes the place of an initial double crochet. And around we go. Here we are all the way around. Time to join the round. Now this round is very, very, very simple. Begin with chain one, single crochet into that same stitch. That is basically increasing one because we are going to simply single crochet into every stitch thereafter all the way around but we want to end up with a total of 65 stitches. So around we go, single crocheting, and we'll join the round in the usual manner when we get to the end. Oh, you know what? I just realized we've done half doubles and doubles, but I haven't reviewed single, which is insert the hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through. That's it. In, loop, yarn over, pull through both loops. It's a smaller, shorter, quicker stitch than either the half double or the double. And you can see that developing. Our final round puts those pretty scallops on the edge. I'm going to begin with a chain two, which counts as a half double crochet, then double crochet into the next stitch, chain two, double crochet into the following stitch. Don't skip anything. Those chains are creating the scallop. When he calls them the bow, half double crochet into the next stitch. and slip stitch, just insert and pull through. And there we go. That's one. And we're going to end up with 13 of these around. Half double crochet, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, half double crochet, slip stitch, and another scallop is completed. Let's count that out again. Here's stitch one. Half double crochet is stitch one, double crochet is stitch two, the two chain stitches come next and they do not count as a stitch. Stitch three is another double crochet. Oops, dropped it. Stitch four is a half double. And stitch five, I need a little bit more yarn slack. Stitch five is a slip stitch. One more time. Half double. Double. Chain two. Double. What this is doing is putting the tallest stitches, the two doubles, towards the middle, and that makes the scallop. Half double. And the shortest stitch 
is the slip, and that makes the lower edge of the scallop. So on around we go. Well, I have a confession to make. My camera cut off unexpectedly, and I thought I was filming my final slip stitch, and I was not. But that is okay. I have undone things, and I will show it to you now. The reason I'm confessing is to tell you I would not normally leave this e 90 yarn tail. I had already woven it in. So we're now going to reenact the final slip stitch. Pull through. I would have and did leave about four inches and then I would weave in and snip. But as it is, I will have to be creative. Stick my yarn needle up this way to thread it because I don't have enough length to use the normal method. Pull it through to the back and now do the same thing while weaving through the back of the stitches. First load some stitches onto the needle. Now insert my shortened yarn tail. And by the way, that final little thunderstorm here, that final slip stitch of the pattern is also the same one used to join the rounds. So there we are. Very pretty. And I had an idea while I was looking at these. You certainly could take a piece of something heat proof, um, a piece of quilting material or wool felt, lay it between two of these and stitch the edges together to make a good trivet, reminding you that you would want to use cotton or wool for a trivet because it is much more heat resistant and much safer less likely to melt when we put a hot pot on it than this acrylic. Thank you, Monique. That was fun and it's very pretty.